a great ad. There's a lot happening with um, with DAs. We almost had a um, a big win up in uh, Queens um, with Caban. And I think, is she contesting? Wasn't there like another level of investigation that was happening with some of the uh, ballots recently? But I don't know what the deal was. There was some I suit think- to count ballots that were uncounted. Nevertheless, yeah. with uh, Krasner in Philadelphia, there is um, a sort of a wave of, of uh, there's a reform movement amongst DAs, or at least uh, you know, uh, D, you know, people who are seeking the position of uh, district attorney. Um, this is uh, Chiesa uh, Boudin, Chessa, sorry, um, Boudin, who is um, well. Uh, let's play the uh, the ad. I mean, I, some people may know who he is already. <laughs> We live in a city built on a Oopsies. simple ideal. It's called equal justice for all. But for so many of us, this ideal is being betrayed. We've become a city of prosperity, but also of abject poverty. We've become a city of aspiration, but also of exclusion and inequity. Our most vulnerable residents do not receive the mental health care and shelter they need. We fill our jails with African-American San Franciscans who make up more than half the county's inmates, but only 5% of the city's population. We let the wealthy defendants go free on bail, even if they're dangerous, while the poor remain behind bars, even if they're innocent. I know what it's like to be impacted by the criminal justice system. When I was an infant, my mother was sentenced to decades in prison. My father may never get out. My earliest memories are walking through steel gates to visit them. When I served as a public defender, I brought those experiences with me to the courthouse every day as I worked on behalf of the poorest and most overlooked residents of our city to ensure that people who couldn't afford a lawyer still had access to equal justice. I'm part of a growing movement that's bringing a new vision to the district attorney's office, a vision to make the criminal justice system work for all of us not just the rich and powerful. Justice demands an independent voice, someone willing to directly challenge a broken system. That means someone willing to confront those with power, not someone beholden to a political machine, not someone who owes favors to the people who protect the status quo. San Francisco is one of the greatest cities on earth, but it isn't money or power or venture capital that makes us great. It's our vision of a society that values everyone. We can end money bail, test every single rape kit, stand up to ICE in the Trump administration, and eliminate racial disparities. We can make San Francisco a city of equality and inclusion. We have that choice before us right now, in this election. Let's make San Francisco work for all of us. Please vote Chesa Boudin for district attorney. So, his folks, Kathy Boudin and um, uh, uh, David Gilbert, um, who were members of the Weather Underground mm-hmm. and um, were, uh, were, you know, I think it was a Brinks robbery and um, uh, sent to prison for, uh, I can't remember how long Kathy Boudin was, was in there, but maybe 20 years or something or 18 years. Um and then raised uh, by Bill Ayers. It's unreal. Uh, and uh, Bernadine Dorn. And and now he's running to be a cop. And now he's running it's, to be a cop. It's, ki- it's poetic. Right? Yeah. Um, and shout out to Leighton Woodhouse and, and his partner. I don't know Leighton's partner, but they emailed out the this. They worked on this. Uh, it uh, was, it's it's, it's an impressive ad, I yeah. think. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's interesting to see reform hit that position Mm -hmm. um in a way that like you know um in a way that is uh, you know i don't uh, it it expands the imagination of Mm -hmm. what that position can be Mm -hmm. in in a really important way i think especially in a state like california with the private prison complex it's just owned the state's criminal justice system and politicians for decades i mean we see it with kamala harris right now 
I think it's a, it's a great narrative, counter narrative. Um, and, you know, her approval ratings in, in her own state, forget about the presidential primary, are going down. Uh, so it's it's amazing to see just the, the shift so drastic um, and so rapidly in California, even in Northern California, where you think it's this like beacon of progress. Right. <laughs> there have been a lot of conversations within DSA specifically about how to approach these uh, quote unquote progressive prosecutors that are running right now. Yeah. There was a resolution that I think did not make it to the floor at this year's convention. And I can honestly see it from both sides. Mm-hmm. I think um, if you're more of a progressive liberal reformist type, it's a no brainer. These are reformist reforms. It's harm reduction. It makes sense. If you're coming at it from a perspective of abolition, Mm -hmm. as the organizers from No New Jails are, the people that I spent all day with yesterday at the No New Jails rally, um, that's not enough. It doesn't fit into an abolitionist horizon. As they say, there's no such thing as a progressive prosecutor. And No New Jails is a non-reformist reform in that you are not just making things better for people in jail you're reducing the number of people who can even be put in jail in a way that hopefully has a snowball effect and the relationship between these two approaches and between these two Mm -hmm. tactics is uh it's got a fraught history it's really complicated but my hope is that an organization like dsa can kind of walk the line between them because we have so many different kinds of politics and we have so many different kinds of organizers and, you know, in all the internal contradictions that come with it. But well, you, can, like, you can do both, though. You can apply the political pressure. I mean, a DA doesn't have the ability to to really decide on whether or not no new, you know, no new jails are set up after you close Rikers. It's really a political decision. It's a city council decision. It's a mayoral decision. So having, you know, you have to, if you're going to go the political route, understand where to apply that pressure effectively and where to apply the pressure within the terms of, I mean, the DA is going to exist. It's not going to be shut down. So would you well, rather have that's the thing, an asshole think, in there? Or? Well, I think I think there are, I mean, I think, you know, at one point uh, the DSA has to, or you know, figure out what positions are we going to endorse? Right. What positions as a matter of policy we will not endorse anybody because we don't think the position should exist. Right. Yeah, well, it's delicate, right? Because there are people in the No New Jails movement who don't trust DSA, partly because it's of, you know, our, our race and class makeup that we have right now, but partly because we do do things like endorse DAs and we do things coming from a more reformist, less mm-hmm. abolitionist perspective that uphold at the end of the day, the carceral state and the bourgeois state. So, I mean, it, I want them to trust us. I understand why they might not. Um, I also got to give a shout out to folks like Tiffany Caban, who did endorse no new jails Mm -hmm. and took up the cause of abolition, despite knowing that the people who are most heavily involved with this are never going to give them their support or their endorsement in return. Uh